zone four. So this is still not considered a tropical depression or storm at this point. You can definitely see that rotation, that circulation wrapping around Cuba tonight, but we just don't have quite had the characteristics to officially give this a closed low, which would give it that tropical depression, tropical storm status. So we are seeing this still move to the west northwest tonight over Cuba. This is rather mountainous terrain, so this is not going to allow for strengthening at this point. I have high confidence. Basically, what you see is what you're going to get with this sloppy system. I don't see it strengthening in the next couple of hours. However, once it gets into this little sliver of open water just north of Cuba and west of the Keys. That'll happen sometime tomorrow morning. That is where I do think conditions will be a whole lot more conducive for further development. I do think that's when we could see a storm reaching near 35 miles per hour, which would be a depression and then 39 or higher. That would be a tropical storm and that is forecast to happen late tomorrow evening. So let's go ahead and walk you through what we know so far. The very latest here it is. We are still tracking not only some tropical storm watches and warnings, but we still have quite a few advisories in place as well. This yellow you see here are actual tropical storm watches. The tropical storm warnings are encompassing portions of uh, just south of our southwestern portions of the coastline. Well, south of Fort Myers even all the way down towards the Keys tonight. Now check this out. This is the latest cone. This actually came out at 5 p.m. We do get an 8 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. This is mostly to account for those wind speeds. If there is any change in pressure, the movement as well as the location of the storm, but we won't get an actual new cone until 11 p.m. tonight. So definitely tune in to 10 Tampa Bay at 11. We'll have the latest for you there, but this is verifying what I was just mentioning. I do not see this strengthening through the overnight hours until we get to a little after sunrise tomorrow morning. That's when this will eventually cross out of Cuba and make its way back into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. This icon here is indicating a tropical depression status at that point, which would be right around 35 miles per hour when it comes to those maximum sustained wind speeds. Check this out. You see this icon changes here to a tropical storm that is forecast to happen. Possibly, I think the earliest to be late tomorrow evening, but likely to happen even to the overnight hours going into your Sunday. That is where we could see those wind speeds make it over 39 miles per hour. That officially makes it a tropical storm status. And again, those wind speeds happen typically closer to the center of the storm. But when you have a very broad broad sloppy system, those impacts can be felt a little farther out and about. So we could again, as this moves towards the north through the second half of the weekend, we could feel along the coastline some of those gustier conditions, some of those higher wind speeds. And then when you have this huge swath of a system kind of wrapping rain around it, you're going to get those off and on scattered showers. So that trail continues to take it to the north. I want to bring something up with the cone, and we mention this with every single system that we track. While you see the icons right down the center of this cone, this cone is indicating where the possibilities of that center could actually end up falling. So the center of the storm could be a little farther to the west or it could end up making landfall sooner and staying to the east of that cone. And I would make that point because of the fact we do have some models that are showing both scenarios. So you'll see how as we go through the weekend and even to early next week, it keeps that tropical storm status crosses over northern Florida and the Florida Georgia line back out towards the east coast. Even parts of the Carolinas could be dealing with a tropical storm, a weakening tropical storm at that, but then possibly even trying to get a little bit stronger as it rides the coastline by the time we get to the middle of next week. So that is something that is going to be impacting multiple states when all is said and done. But for us here locally, it's primarily a weekend impact, especially the second half of the weekend. So I showed you how that cone does widen as we go through Sunday and into Monday, and that is because that uncertainty these are different spaghetti models, so we have different models that run over and over back, back and forth and continue to basically get the latest data from where it thinks the center of the storm is currently located because again, we do not have an organized system quite yet. It grabs what it thinks the center is and plays out these situations based on that assumption, based on that prediction. So that's why we have a cluster of spaghetti plots to the west over here that want to take it up towards the panhandle and towards Big Bend. Then we have another cluster here that takes it more so towards the immediate bay, which I will tell you that does look ominous, right? Well, that actually could be the best case scenario if it were to make landfall sooner along 
along Tampa Bay or maybe even down to the south because that gives the center less time to be over those warm Gulf waters. There is a very shallow continental shelf right off the west coast of Florida. If you've been here for a long time, you know how the geography here works. This is giving that ocean temperature a lot of room to heat up. So we do not want tropical systems to sit on the eastern portions of the Gulf of Mexico for too long because they can get stronger very, very quickly. So that means we are looking at the potential of a tropical storm trying to strengthen as it makes its way towards the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. As mentioned, I do not think this will strengthen until we get towards the midday parts of Saturday at the very early earliest, and that would be more so just to the west of the Keys. You start to see a little bit of not only these heavier showers and these more broad areas of circulation kind of really forming around this, but then you start to see this kind of white line. This is our pressure gradient. This is showing us we're getting a closed low. Or we're getting a deep area of low pressure that is getting that tropical characteristic. So that not only tells me are we seeing a tropical depression, but we're likely strengthening to a tropical storm at this point with those heavy bands pushing along Fort Myers. You'll see how the center of that on this particular in-house model wants to drive it up along the Tampa Bay coast. And then you'll see how some of these heavier downpours around that center, especially to the right quadrant, the right side of the system. That's where we could see not only the heaviest amounts of rainfall, but some of the strongest winds as well. And all the way on this right side of this quadrant here, that is where we have that threat for tornado activity from spin ups. Some tornadoes could be possible, and I think that could start as early as tomorrow night, take us through the overnight hours and into Sunday morning and afternoon. That's going to be our primary window as this all lifts up. And sure, the brunt of this, the circulation, the really center of this storm will clear Florida by Monday. But notice how on the back side of it, it will be pulling up moisture behind it from the Gulf of Mexico. So that actually keeps some training. It keeps some of those scattered showers still pulling in behind it. And that is why Sunday into Monday remains that flash flood threat because of the fact we're still going to have some heavy downpours hitting around. But when it comes to the winds, that's still where we're kind of trying to figure out and nail down who will see the strongest of those winds because any change in the center of that storm by either pugging the coastline or moving back a little bit further out towards the west into the Gulf. That will change greatly just how strong those tropical storm force winds or at least how close they make it to the coast. Now tropical storm force winds I mentioned 39 miles per hour or higher and that would be sustained. So think in a consistent uh, time frame. Just keep dealing with that. Not so much wind gusts where they come sporadically sustain wind speeds. The earliest arrival that we could see that around portions of not only Sarasota, maybe even Manatee counties down towards Lee and Charlotte counties. That'll be right around Sunday morning. Again, some of those outer bands we will start to feel them here in the Bay Area as early as tomorrow night, no doubt. But I do think some of those stronger winds, they will start to gradually be felt, especially along the coastline as early as Sunday morning. But the probability we actually have that uh, 39 mile per hour sustained wind speeds or higher. It's a little on the lower end for now along the coast, about a 15% chance of that happening a little bit higher up towards Gainesville, but that could still change. There is still a lot of wiggle room for these numbers to change. So I just tell you to take that with a grain of salt. I still think some of the strongest could be as we approach parts of your Sunday morning. And because of that, because of all that water that's going to be pushing up along the coast, we are going to be, of course, watching out for storm surge for our coastal regions. Earlier today, it was looking like one to three inches all up and down, rather one to three feet all up and down the west coast of Florida. That has since changed with our 5 p.m. advisory, two to four feet of storm surge. So extra water being pushed on shore. That potential could be there based on where some of those heavier amounts of wind really push on shore going into this event. So when all is said and done, the main impacts I want you to take away from this is that we will notice conditions gradually, gradually going downhill late tomorrow night, the very beginning stages, I should say. The showers, the heaviest of the rain will start tomorrow night. The first half of the day is actually going to be fantastic. So finish your preparations by Saturday afternoon for sure before sunset. Then I do think that's when conditions will start to deteriorate. Sunday's going to kind of be a wash. We're going to still see a lot of this, not only heavy rain, but there could be a tornado threat still. And of course, those gusty winds. 
the system then pulls away, but still what will be left behind with it, especially in those areas where we could have a lot of that rain training or basically dumping inches of rainfall in, in within the same regions that could happen in some spots where we could be seeing a widespread anywhere from four to eight inches of rain when all is said and done. There could even be localized spots where you may even get more of that in a very short amount of time. Wind impacts we're going to continue to tweak, especially as the storm wiggles more to the left, more to the right. Does it hug the coast? Does it want to stay more so offshore? That will greatly change what our wind forecast is. Right now we could see those gusts anywhere from about 55 to 65 miles per hour at times. And that would be especially up and down along the coastline. That's where we would feel the strongest portions of that. And that is why there is that storm surge watch in place along the Gulf coastlines because the ingredients are there that in the next 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, we could be dealing with that situation. We're getting a better idea of not only the track and uh, the track and strength. There are some wiggle room. There is some time for that system to possibly get a little bit stronger. There's still also a lot of land interaction it's dealing with right now, so it's really going to depend how quickly it can use the ingredients it has in the Gulf of Mexico to strengthen before we can really nail that down. But one thing that is certain is we are talking about a tropical system, likely a tropical storm making it into the eastern Gulf this weekend. So we'll be here to keep you updated. We did issue a a weather impact alert day for both Saturday and Sunday. This is actually primarily for the second half of Saturday. I do think we could maybe see some heat advisories through the afternoon. It will be a hot and steamy one, but the big thing will be Saturday night starting to see those heavy bands of rain, possibly even some of those stronger storms start to roll through overnight into Sunday. Sunday is going to be our primary day that we're dealing with tropical activity and you'll see conditions Next week, they actually return back to near normal, back to where we should be for this time of year, along with those daily showers and thunderstorms. So we'll be here in the Weather Center keeping you updated all weekend long, and we'll continue to bring you these updates on 10 Tampa Bay Plus on YouTube and on our social media. Also tonight on 10 Tampa Bay at 11 o'clock.